It's no surprise to see lawmakers heckled in the halls of Capitol Hill. But now, many of them are being heckled in public, or more specifically, at dinner with their family. This weekend, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell was confronted while he was at a dinner in Louisville with his wife, Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. Also on Friday, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi was confronted by protesters in Florida who shouted pro-Trump slogans and called her a communist. So is this going too far? For The Views tonight, we go to our liberal panelist, Georgia State Representative Erica Thomas, and for the conservative side, Ned Ryan, CEO of American Majority. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for hey, having Scotty. us. Okay, so Erica, what do you make of these interruptions to politicians as they are just living their lives? You know, it's happening everywhere. You know, here in our state, we just passed a bill uh, this year so where you cannot heckle on college campuses. We had an incident where a conservative came and the kids would not let them speak him speak at all. And so we passed a bill this year um, where you cannot heckle on college campuses. Will that be widespread? I don't know. But I do believe that people do need to have their, their freedom of speech. And, but people need to be able to speak on podiums as well. So, well, and I agree, but Ned, is there any reason to shout down somebody while they're eating dinner with their family? Is there any justification for that? No, absolutely <laughs> not. I'm, I, I, absolutely not. I'm all for free speech. I'm all for being able to lobby your public officials uh, at their offices uh, during office hours and, and coming and having a sit down and, and telling them you strongly disagree with them on certain issues. To go into restaurants, to heckle them in public, to drive them out of restaurants is completely unacceptable. That's not how we operate in this country, Scotty. We, this, this, this strikes me as more of a banana republic style behavior than a constitutional republic. We settle our differences at the ballot box. If we have our differences, hopefully we can still have rational conversations. Uh, you know, I think part of the, the thing that we've got to get back to is understanding elections have consequences. Donald Trump is the duly elected president of the United States. As soon as the left can accept that, I think we can have more rational dialogue and say, we'll settle our differences at the ballot box. We've got an election just in about two weeks in which obviously the House, uh, House and the Senate uh, have elections. And if the left wants to settle its differences there, that's how we do it, not by harassing these people in public places. But Ned, many on the left would say, guess what? This is starting, this is just a reflection of the top and how Donald Trump is acting at his rallies and the things that he's saying. He's, in, he's the one that's encouraging this discourse. So can the president take any sort of responsibility for just this type of inst instability and lack of civility that's happening today? Well, I mean, part, part of the rhetoric, you know, I, I've told the president, the president to his face, I agree with 85 to 90 percent of what he says on Twitter and in public. There's probably about 10 or 15 percent which we could live without. Uh, I think that there is a certain responsibility of everyone in public office to say, hey, listen, there are very strong differences. And, and, and Scotty, I understand why the debate's gotten so heated. We, I really think we as a country are kind of at this, this decision point where are we going to go down this path of socialism and, and, and bigger government? Or are we going to say we're going to go down more limited government free enterprise, you know, limited government approach? And so I think. Part of it's the, the topics. It's very heated about which direction we're going to take. I do think, though, that everyone is responsible for the rhetoric they use. And understanding at the end of the day, Scotty, we're all Americans. And this is the one thing that frustrates me a great deal about all of this rhetoric that's taking place. We can have our differences. We can have strong debates. At the same time, we're all Americans. And we should unite, again, as a common people with common values. And I still think and I still believe that we still have common values and principles in place that we should focus on, focus on our commonality instead of our differences. So Erica, is this starting to kind of backfire as if the American people are always saying we want more and more access to our elected officials, and yet we're seeing congressmen and senators having less and less town halls because of these type of activities and these types of actions. So are we, is, this, is this a reason why you think that Congress is using the excuse to not have any more because they don't want to necessarily be faced with this type of response? Well, you know, I think that you should always make sure that you're doing things in the community and doing town halls, no matter if you have hecklers or not, because the people uh, that elected you need to see you so that they can hold you accountable. But at the same time, we need to get control of the people that are doing these outlandish things to politicians. I'm a politician, and I totally understand what is going on. We need to be able to live our lives every single day without having the fear of someone jumping out of their car, right. knocking on our 
our own doors because my uh, address where I live is public. And yes, I've had people come to my house, knock on my door. You know, so I think that we really need to, yeah, be civil and 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 let people know that right. this is not. We have to hold people accountable. Yes, but this is not how you hold people accountable by knocking at their doors or by stepping in right. to their own personal spaces. Yes, they might say you're a public figure. Everything is public, but that is not fair because again, we all are human beings. And one thing that I want to point out is that we have to make make stop making about left versus right. We are seeing hecklers and we are seeing people on both sides uh, being heckled. So we need to make sure that, like, again, we're all human beings and we need to say that this is not right on any side. Well, I think it starts with having debates like this where you both respect each other's opinions and find the common ground. Right. Thank you, Ned and Thank Erica, you. for once again having a great debate. Hey, YouTube. Thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.